everyone, it's me Carla. I'm back with another video today. Um, I was on vacation, but now we're back and I have a bunch of videos coming up for you all. But when I saw this, I just had to do it. Look at this. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. So this is the Lowland Reversible Swimsuit, but it is hacked to be a one piece. So it came out super cute. Um, the tie is meant to be in the back, but just so y'all can see the whole thing, here it is, and I will be covering this in today's video start to finish. I even go in detail on how to um, mash your pattern and everything like that, or at least how I did. And yeah, I'm really excited to share with you all, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I apologize in advance for any background noise. I'm filming this during the day. And first things first, we are going to want to adjust our pattern. So this is a 2T for the diaper pattern. It's just my ch child size. And you're going to want to print out the high-waisted version of whatever um, size you need. And then we have the front and the back piece. Now what I'm going to do is kind of join these together. That's why I have my tape. I'm just going to join them together like this. In the Lowland tutorial, they said to overlap about a half inch, but my daughter is taller, so I'm going to omit that step and just go ahead and bam, do it like this. Now you're also going to want to um, taper this off, so obviously these aren't the same width. So I'm just going to lightly fold my paper over because I'm still want to, you know, have this paper be useful for if I want to do the other version. I'm just going to lightly fold it to kind of taper it off like this. And when I'm cutting the fabric, it'll make it easier on me to just follow along this line like this. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And now we're going to just have this um, giant piece. So like this, right? And that's what we're going to use to cut out our fabric. I'm going to be showing you how I cut. If anybody's wondering, I like to use this Olfa cutter I got on Amazon. And I actually like to um, push the button while the blade is out. Um, always be careful. Oh, I was going to say obviously. Always be careful because, you know, you can cut yourself. But I like to just keep it out so that I'm not pushing. And I just find that cutting is a lot easier. So a little bonus tip for y'all. Now we're going to be cutting. So because this is on the fold, I'm just going to move it over like this. Or at least that's the direction I'm going to be cutting. I have this gorgeous custom printed, um, what is this? Double brush poly. So because we need two of the front and back, I'm just going to be doing the same print. Hopefully um, that won't confuse anybody. You can obviously do two different prints because it is reversible, but I just didn't really find anything to coordinate with this. So all I'm going to do is try and get the width. So I'm going to fold it over once and then try and get the width of the pattern like this so that I can get, so I can cut two pieces all at once. And that was almost perfect, but a little bit is over the edge there, so. I'm trying to work around my tripod, so that's why it's a little awkward. But I'm going to just make this a tad wider. And of course, try and make everything as smooth, or keep everything as smooth as possible. It needs to be a little longer on this side too, so I'm going to go with this. And then like this. So this is just my cheat of, you know, being able to cut everything a lot faster. Now we can cut two of these front and back pieces. Just like so. If you're doing two different prints, then you would, you know, do the same thing. But making sure that you get one of each different print that you have. So I'm going to cut this out and then I'll be back. So that's just what it looks like all cut out. I'm going to put this over to the side. And cut off some of my little scraps here just to, I like to just, you know, cut off little scraps when I can. And I have my trash over here. So now we are going to do 
the other pieces. So we also need four sets, or I mean, four of these cut um, two sets of opposites, which just means you want them to be the mirror image of each other. So what I like to do for that is just fold over my fabric the width of the pattern piece like this and then try and you know obviously make it as wide as the pattern piece here I was a little off so I'm going to refold it over to accommodate for that little piece that I missed there we go now I'm actually going to fold this over this way so we just did hot dog style, now I'm going to do hamburger so that I get um, just the two pieces cut in one. I like, again, to shortcut everything, make everything as fast as possible. Sewing already takes up a bunch of my time since I'm mass producing items. So any little shortcuts like this make my life a lot easier. So now I'm going to fold it over around here like this and then we have the two pieces and now I can cut out my pattern piece and you always want to make sure that you um, cover the whole area so you'll be good and then I'm going to just slide this over because I have this little gap but okay I'm now I'm going to cut this out and you do want to cut here like this isn't on the fold you're going to want to cut here so now I have my two mirrored sets and we're done with all the cutting so now let's get on to the sewing I literally cannot wait to make this so first things first I'm the realist just kidding okay so first thing we're going to open up both of our these like super long pieces and we're going to grab them from the shoulders like this oops sorry I up into y'all and same thing with the other piece and then we are going to attach our shoulder pieces. Ooh, that's my stomach. I have a really bad, what's it called, habit of not eating uh, until like 4 p.m. It's like 3 right now. But anyways, so, and then I eat like a lot throughout the night and stuff, so don't worry, I'm getting my calories. It's just, I get them at weird times. <laughs> anyways, so we're going to do the shoulders next, like this, and make sure that our little strappy pieces are on the inside. And we're going to do the same thing for both. And we are going to sew on the shoulders. So make sure that you are sewing. Bam, bam, bam. And of course this one too. So all four shoulders. And then we'll be back. Um, a little quick intermission, but I've been loving this area in my laundry room. It's literally become my favorite workspace. Like this countertop is the perfect height for everything for like sewing standing up, cutting standing up, filming videos, uh, filming TikToks. It's been working out perfectly. So um, I know a lot of people are tight on space sometimes. So maybe this is an idea for you. Um, I like to move around all different rooms of the house. Like I can just, I just cannot stay in my sewing room. So again, just a little tidbit here, but let's get back to our regular scheduled program. Okay, so for this next part, I tried to lay it out um, as best as I could so you could see, but all we're going to do next is sew along the legs, one, two, along the armpits, three, four, and then you're going to want to sew from this corner where the, the straps are, from this corner, into the strap all around this neck area, all around this neck area back around the strap and then to the starting point of the strap. So, let me see if I can move this a little bit more over here. Okay, so again, the legs, one, two, the armpits, three, four, all around the strap and neck area. That would be like five. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and do that and then come back. I have all of that sewn up and now we're going to take the bottom of everything and we're going to sew, leave a gap, and then sew again. So that's just um, for the bottoms. So we're going to sew, stop, leave a gap, and then sew again. Okay, next we need to push the straps all the way through into the shoulder and get it out, basically. So do the same thing. for. Okay, so for this next part, it's going to be a little confusing. But what you want to do is bring up 
block. So everything is looking like this, right? You want to kind of open this up from the bottom. So now you have two sections. And just start pushing it. We're going to kind of, I mean, for lack of a better term, we're going to just kind of fist it through the crotch here. Like this. Until we see the right side of everything. So if you're seeing the right side, you're doing it correctly. And then we're going to, again, this is kind of the confusing part. So um, just fist it through. And when you get the bottoms out um, through the top, make sure that you're keeping the crotch like where it would naturally be. You know what I mean? Like the crotch is down here. So naturally, that's where it would be. And then all you're, all you're doing is looking inside and looking at the pieces that you need to grab. So like for this side, I can see that naturally I'm going to have to grab this piece and then there's, you want something that looks like this on the side. So now let's look for it on the other side. You might have to play around with your fabric, but okay, here it, I found it. So again, you kind of have, you know, this line and this line and now we're going to match it up with seam to seam here hopefully you can see that let me see if I can get a little closer seam to seam here and you're literally just placing it inside like this so all the right sides are touching so you have four layers and all right sides are touching and you can actually pin this down if you need to so like I'm going to just add a pin up towards the top here. And then same with the other side. So again, you have this line. You want to meet it with the side seams to sides or the little seams. And then you're just making sure that all right sides are touching like this. Okay, and then I'm going to pin it. And of course, I want all my raw edges to be in line too. So I'm just gonna, you know, manipulate the fabric. Okay, so hopefully I didn't lose y'all, but that's what it's looking like so far. And we're gonna do the same thing from up, for up here. So we're going to grab these pieces, right? And you want to make sure that everything's looking okay. So if we look on the inside, you want everything to kind of flow naturally. So this is how it's flowing and with our straps on the inside. We always want the straps on the inside. So we're going to do the same thing, except this time we're going to grab it from the top here. We're going to put the strap inside. And we're going to grab the top seam here for and this little seam here. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we did on the side. Right? We want all four sides to match up. And all four fabrics to be right sides touching. So like this. And if you have a little gap here, I think that's okay. I, mean, I think the little gap even looks cuter than no gap. But I mean, it's all parts of reference. You can even stretch it to meet if you want. But we're basically going to just have one thing to sew down like this. That's what you want. So if you need to rewatch this, it's the beauty of YouTube. You can replay it if anything got a little confusing, but let's do the other side now. So again, you want the strap to be on the inside and this to just naturally um, come down. So you don't want it to be twisting or anything. And then I'm just going to grab this corner and match it up with this corner and place it inside and then place my strap inside just poked myself with a pin <laughs> and then you want all four fabrics to be right sides together I mean all four layers of the fabric to be right sides together and to be raw edges um, touching and I'm going to grab my pin just to secure it all and show you all what it looks like so this is what you should have this little shape right here is what you should have now all I'm going to do is sew down the side, sew down the side, and make sure to remove your pins, please. You don't want to mess up your serger. If you go over a pin, I swear your serger will be done for. 
unless you're just like super lucky <laughs> but anyways so now i'm going to sew all this down if you need to add more pins uh do so especially around this area because it's like kind of you know floating around in there but okay enough talk i'm just going to sew it down now okay i sewed everything down the beauty of this being reversible or is that you don't have to even cut these tails down like it's all gonna be on the inside so now we have to fish out and look for that little hole that we made so go back into your crotch look for that little hole that you made put your whole hand in there and pull everything out bam easy as that and then just try and play around with it i like to grab oops whenever i get um some rogue threads i just snip them off but anyways i like to grab it from the shoulders and just shake everything out so here are my shoulders and then bam i'm going to tie this in the middle just so y'all see what we did see what we came up with here see this in action okay and then of course <laughs> of course i'm missing threads y'all i'm too excited for this so i'm slacking a little bit but okay and then all that's left to do is to close up this little hole if you watch my other video all i did was top stitch it you can also liar stitch it uh, whatever option you want but here is the final product so i hope you all enjoyed this video and definitely let me know if you have any requests i'm going to be dedicating more time to my youtube in the next few months so let me know any requests and i hope you all enjoyed bye